Four years ago, I got my first car, a 1971 Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow for $6,500. It was broken and couldn't even drive a mile. I realized pretty quickly I couldn't afford to fix it and it's still sitting in my garage broken with a head gasket problem. I didn't have any money left over to buy a replacement vehicle. So after six months of raking leaves, my grandparents ended up loaning me $5,500. I used that $5,500 to buy this old F-150 for $3,500 and then fix it up and I sold it for $7,200 six months later. After that, I bought a Porsche 944 for $8,200, drove it for six months, cost me $3,500 to maintain, used all my money. I simply could not afford to keep it. I traded it for an Audi A4 manual. This car was fantastic. It was exactly what I needed at the time and I loved it. I got to fulfill my childhood dream of being a teenager with a modified car. No bank loans, no debt, nothing. And while I owned this, I also bought an LS400 for under $1,000 off of my ex-girlfriend's neighbor. About a month later, I got the news that I would have to leave America due to my visa expiring under my parents. So I chose to move to Canada as I had citizenship and it was the easiest place to go. With this news though, I needed to sell both my vehicles in order to fund the trip fund the moving, and fund my business Magna Cars. As you know, it's always been my dream to be a full-time YouTuber. Hi, my name is TJ, and in this YouTube channel, I needed the money to invest into trips and traveling to get content as I no longer had a car. Over a year later, and I finally am in a position to buy another car. Here's the story of how I finally got a car again and what my plans are. Because if you think I bought this to keep it stock, you're kidding yourself. We are here at the, uh, house location alleyway i see the car in front of me <laughs> that actually looks so sick that actually looks dope i mean it definitely needs a lot of like work i didn't even i didn't even notice the windshield oh my gosh that's crazy yeah he was my dad's friend and he had it and it just sat in his yard and i was like four years ago i was like give me the car man please like i'm gonna save it and he was like no i'm never selling it and then the second i turned 19 he's like come pick it up it's for you it used to be covered in duct tape it had yeah. duct tape racing stripes and like oh. a checkered pattern on the whole side it was replacing oil i had to do the master cylinder and the valve cover gasket do you mind if we look at inside is it unlocked yeah it's unlocked yeah i see this this rip but yeah and this kind of dirty inside but Cracks the dash is okay. My friend Jason was gonna be coming to check out the car later as he'd be the one who's helping me install the Evo 2 fiberglass body kit on the car. After all, that is the entire reason I'd be buying this thing. Just before he arrived and we went to take it out on a test drive, I noticed it had a Magnaflow exhaust on it, which was pretty cool. And then Jason arrived. It's a 190E. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need you to look it over <laughs> and tell me Auto if thing. you think it's worth getting or if i should get one from america okay see i think you're just a little stuck here if you there you go reminds me of my rolls royce <laughs> seeing the star on the hood again and the, this is the same color scheme white with dark blue yeah and the wood too it's like buying the same car again but more reliable and more rusty it's actually pretty refined in the interior. It's not like rattling. I thought it was gonna be like rattles and creaks like yeah. everywhere, but it's actually like not bad. Not steering's kind of like a Camry. Feels though like when you turn it, it feels stiff. Uh, like one way versus the other way. Probably just a little playing the tie rods. Not very quick. That's foot to the floor. Oh yeah, bro. We finished test driving the car and surprisingly it wasn't that bad. Then Jason gave his final opinion on the car, but not before we discovered another problem. Yeah, if you look up here though, like you can see the evidence here. Yeah. That's my <laughs> finger. That's my finger. Uh, it's one of those things like, this has potential to be a great buy and a great project. Yeah. Just because it's not a bit of rust everywhere, it's a lot of rust in one spot. It looks horrible, but it's a lot easier to handle. It's just as long as it doesn't get to here. Now I needed to know if I'd get Jason's approval. I mean, for the right price, it'd be a decent base, just because of what you want to do with it. Like, yeah. Like, there's a lot of superficial rust 
and how the wheel arches and stuff. But if you're going wide, it'll be cut out, right? It just gets cut out. Now that I had Jason's approval to buy the car, well, providing it was 2000 roughly, all I had to do was negotiate. This is where things got crazy in this story. I did negotiate with the girl on the day and I said, hey, I'll give you 2000 because it's not worth it for the rest. She actually said yes, but she wanted me to wait on it and then come back later in the week, take the fender off and check the rust how bad it really is. I was fine with that. I mean, why not? She was making sure I didn't get scammed. Over the weekend though, I started thinking, I just want to buy the car. I don't want to wait. I don't even care about the rust. Let me just buy it. And sure enough, on Monday, I get a text from her saying, hey, I need you to buy the car for the price we agreed on, or I'm going to keep it probably over the winter and turn it into a drift car. I was immediately like, yep, I'll pay you the money. Let me come pick it up this afternoon. But then... She texted me at about 4 p.m. an hour before I was going to pick it up saying the guy had offered her $5,000 and he was coming to look at the car right then. I was like, there's no way this guy's actually going to pay that price. But OK, you know, I don't blame you. Let him come. Let him look at it and we'll see. But because I was already on my way to buy the car, me and my friends still decided to show up. So we were actually there while the guy came to test drive the car. Then they asked if they could take it around the block. She was like, of course, they take it around the block gone for about five minutes we hear them driving around because it's a small neighborhood as soon as they get back they pull the car not even into the garage again get out leave the doors open get in their crv and leave so we're pretty sure that these two guys came to just joyride around the block and smoke now that was done i was standing there and i was like hey i'm still here i've got the money i've got the license plate i'm ready to go and this is where our renegotiating began I want the car, I have the dealer plate. I'll drive it home, I'll buy it today. I already said 2,500. You need money to pay this car off. I'll give you 27. Okay. You'll take it? I'll take it. Deal? It's yours. All right, well, let me send you the money. Let's go. TJ has a car. <laughs> after how long? It's after a year and a half of not having a car, I moved to Canada, I sold my two cars, and I bought this. Now, before I show you the features of this car, why did I buy kind of what looks like a piece of junk out of all the cars in the world? Well, there's a thing called the 190E Evo 2. If you don't know what that is, it's a legendary race car that competed in the 80s and 90s with the BMW E30 M3. It has a DTM wing, massive body kit, lowered, and I'm gonna be putting that kit on this car over the next six months and building it into an Evo 2 replica. So I offered her $2,722 and she said, yes. And I bought this with 268,000 kilometers on the clock and it needs a ton of work. Let me show you if we need brand new headlights because these ones are destroyed, rock chips all in here. The entire piece is like broken off. That is, it's not even on, right? This, I literally broke off with my hand. So you might be wondering what happened right here. Well, someone threw a golf ball into the windshield and I'm going to be replacing that obviously because I can't drive it, but it's kind of cool because it looks like Mafia shot at the car. Interior, we'll just uh, ignore this. I don't know, probably got hit Bondo. As you can see inside, I already went through and detailed the interior, which is pristine now. Even the headliner is good. Like the whole car is perfect inside. Cool feature about this car. If I come around to the back, I can unlock the entire car through the boot. Don't worry, these kids revving. If I open this up, this is partly why this car was so cheap. Look in here. It's, it's actually, I think it's gotten worse. <laughs> There's literally a hole. So look, if you can see my finger through the fender, actually take off bits of rust. This from here to here, I need to weld in a new piece because when this got dented in, you can see right here, the metal got creased and then it caused cracking, which rusted all the way up through here. So it's absolutely gone, but I think it's not affecting the strut. Already went to the scrap yard and I cut out this piece. It was like this. And then I'm still gonna have to get a metal plate for the front piece. I may be able to weld that in with my friend. Now, just so you know, I don't know at all how to work on a car. Like I literally can barely change my oil. So this car, I'm gonna be learning how to do everything on it. I'm gonna be learning how to weld. I'm gonna be learning how to do fiberglass over the next six months and building it into an Evo 2 replica. I've already got the wheels for it. I didn't think there was any way I was gonna find a set in Calgary, let alone online, so I didn't even bother looking. The day we were going to buy the car, my friend was on Kijiji and he found a set, come, came up for sale literally an hour before, which is, I cannot believe, $750 Canadian for Evo 2 race wheels. So it's gonna get new tires, it's gonna get new wheels, it's gonna get a full body kit, 
I'm gonna put new flat clear headlights in it. And then once it's done, my plan is to road trip this car all across North America, taking it to car shows and interviewing people. So if you wanted to see this build take place, then please subscribe and give this video a like. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, whatever your dreams are, never ever quit.